Hello everyone, with me today is a new experience, and you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. What I want to do is break down four of the most common sizes the new beginner to cigars will find, and perhaps how to wrap your head around what those sizes normally are, even though there are varying degrees of difference between manufacturer, between owner, between blender, we want to break down what's the most common sizes you'll see and what those sizes mean and how they translate in your smoking experience. For this video, I am smoking our House Blend Connecticut, the Ashcat Torpedo. You can find this Connecticut as well as a whole host of other cigars on oaklandtobacconist.com. Smoking a cigar can be a new experience and definitely one that you want to try, but perhaps maybe have a few reservations on how to do it and how to smoke. What I want to do is help you select the correct cigar when it's time to pick one out from the humidor. And so I want to go over cigar sizes, what those sizes look like, what kind of roles they play, what is the purpose of cigar sizes, and how exactly do they smoke. I also want to give you a few tips on how correctly to cut and light a cigar. So for this, I have four different cigars, different sizes, varying strengths, varying blends. However, we're going to start with this middle one right here. This is our Ashcat Torpedo. The term torpedo comes from this pointed end that you find tapered on the head of the cigar. So you have your normal Parejo size. It's not box pressed or anything like that. It's a normal round shape. And then at the very end, you have a tapering of the edge. That is called a torpedo. The concept is a very traditional one of funneling the smoke and the taste to the center of your palate. Some people really like in torpedoes, some people don't really care for them. However, it definitely gives a prestigious look. Now, the thing that could be deceptive is when you hear torpedo, not all of them are the same ring gauge, not all of them are the same length, but that normally is indicative of having a torpedoed end, a tapered end. So we're gonna go ahead and get this lit up and see how it comes out. When you're cutting a torpedo, you could have the question of, well, how much do you cut off? Do you cut off just a little, the entire amount to where it's not tapered anymore? Most of the time, it can be boiled down to preference. However, when you cut any type of cigar, you don't want to cut too deep because you might cut off the entire cap, which will result in an unraveling of the cigar. And that's, of course, what you don't want. The last thing you want to do is hanging out with everybody. You start lighting up your cigar, it starts unraveling, and you have a fistful of leaves and no smoke output. Is a very easy way to do this is to slowly inch your way down. Cut a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Right now, I'm gonna go actually cut the difference and go right down the center here. We're gonna go ahead and cut it about right there. Perfect. And that should be enough to draw. Now, here comes the term of cold draw. Maybe you've heard this before, maybe you haven't. That is to check the draw and also see what are the impending flavor notes that you receive for the first time. So when I uh, go for a cold draw, I'm checking to make sure it's open. This cigar is drawing perfectly. And I'm almost getting a musty, earthy, hazelnut type of uh, sweetness to it. Here comes another term, and that is toast. How to toast your cigar. The concept and the reason we toast our cigar is to make sure that all of these ends are burning properly. So before you even start puffing on it, instead of jumping right into it, you want to take your lighter and you want to toast the ends to make sure that you get the entire thing lit up. But what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the 360 around the ring, the foot of the cigar, completely gets lit up. And maybe you've seen this before when people are lighting up their cigar and trying it for the first time, you'll see them turn it and blow on it. When that happens, that is to ensure that the entire thing glows red. It lights up red. Once we have that, we know it is properly toasted and ready to go. And there we get our first impression of the cigar. Now, a thing that's very important too is when you're lighting it up to not scar the wrapper. A large portion, a large percentage of the taste coming from this cigar is the wrapper leaf itself. So if you hear like, oh, there's a very light, creamy Connecticut, it's because the Ecuadorian seed Connecticut tends to have more sweetness and tends to be more creamy. If you burn some of that, you're not gonna be tasting all of that flavor that you're getting from the, the wrapper leaf. Same thing with Corojos that have natural sweetness, natural spice, things that are sun-grown, Maduros, those sort of things. they all indicative of what it's wrapped in. So you want to make sure you don't scar that up. Now, many times, I've seen this a hundred times too, when someone picks up a cigar for the first time, they don't know exactly how to draw. One, don't inhale, you never inhale. Cigars are meant for tasting, not inhaling. You're not meant to bring it into your lungs. 
I have told many people if you've ever gone to certain wine tastings where you bring the, the wine in, swish it around, spit it out, get a taste, get a feel for the wine, very similar concept. You bring the smoke in, you let it swish around in your mouth, and then you blow it out. What I normally do is the double tap to make certain that you, one, stoke the uh, cigar itself so make sure it's going, and two, that you taste the cigar. A lot of people, uh, when they first light it up and first try a cigar, they'll go for a very faint pull and not get much smoke, something like this. And then they'll say, oh, that's good. Well, unfortunately, they're not experiencing the cigar to its full potential. So you go for the double tap. You bring it in to stoke it, pull it out one more time, and that's what you taste. It will look something like this. And that way you get the full taste. You get the sweetness of this Connecticut. You get a little bit of that hint of pepper right on the retro hill, but very faint. You get the full flavor of what this cigar can offer. That is the how to cut and light up something like a torpedo. Now, something of this size, as I had mentioned, 52 gauge, the ring gauge is the circumference of the cigar. This is probably, depending on the how quickly you smoke, will last anywhere between 50 to about an hour and a half. 50 minutes to about an hour and a half. So you need to make certain that you have the time if you're having a conversation with someone, if you want to just enjoy yourself in the morning or at night, that is what you are set up for. We're going to start all the way here on my right, your left. That is the Finch. This is the Finch by Blackbird. Very light, easy cigar, full of flavor, also an excellent coffee pair. The Finch is a Robusto. So this Robusto, traditional size, this can definitely vary depending on the manufacturer, the blend, the cigar, whatever. However, traditionally, here in the US market, more times than not, a Robusto size will be that five inch long by 50 ring gauge. This is meant for the 45 minute to maybe an hour type of cigar, something that you get a really good flavor from because of the smaller ring gauge and the wrapper leaf ratio. Right now, the Robusto size is quite possibly the most popular size in the entire US market. A good enough investment of 45 minutes to an hour, you don't wanna go much beyond that. I would recommend something like a Robusto 5x50. Next, we're moving on to this other very silky, sweet, light Connecticut, one of the lightest in our humidor that is the Casa Cuevas. Full in flavor, full in sweetness, but very easy on the palate. You'll notice a very similar ring gauge. In fact, this is also a 50 gauge, but this is a six inch long. This size traditionally is known as the Toro. When you hear the term Robusto, you hear the term Toro, you'll know that Toro is a bit longer. Most traditional six by 50. There's some Toros that are six and a half. There are some that have the ring gauge of 54, 56, much like that Robusto inflection. However, the Toro tends to be more of your hour and 10 to an hour and 30 type of smoke, depending on what type of tobaccos you're using, depending on how fast you smoke. So the Toro is definitely that perfect medium if you want something that's not gonna be too crazy long, but also something longer than a Robusto. Toro tends to be the go-to, and also one of the most popular sizes. That is the Toro size. We're gonna move on to this final, very popular size, and this is the Gordo. This is a six by 60 ring gauge. So this circumference is going to be much bigger. You have much more tobaccos. Oftentimes, many manufacturers will change the blend or manipulate, trying to keep it the same exact taste you're gonna get on that Toro or Robusto size. However, if you're one who likes, wants that big cigar, that one that's gonna last almost two hours, the Gordo size is typically a best bet for you. The six by 60 didn't really get introduced until the end of the cigar boom, late 90s, until it started really really taking off and now it's taking it by storm. So it's definitely one to check out, just even to try the flavor differences, the, the duration differences, and how much cigar is packed into a Gordo. So there you have the four most common sizes you will find inside of a humidor. I certainly hope that has helped. Robusto tends to be smaller. You have Toro, Gordo, and the Torpedo simply named for the tapered end. So hopefully that's helped you a bit in lighting, smoking a cigar, as well as the different sizes. Well, as always, thank you again for watching. I'm Eric with Oakland Tobacconist.